Hi and welcome to the Trading Bell. We have set camp right here at Transcentury offices. We'll be speaking to Shaka Karaoke, the group chairman at Transcentury Group. And they have something to offer because they are floating a rights issue following the approvals by the authority. But first, let's get to know what they're all about and what they're doing and how you stand to benefit. Shaka Kariki, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, quite some spacious offices around here. I enjoyed looking at the view when I was coming in. But first, people could be asking, what is Transcentury and what are they up to or what do they do? I'd like to start this conversation by asking you to kindly help our viewers understand who you are and what you do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Transcentury yeah. is actually an investment group, mm -hmm. an investment company. And uh, through Transcentury, we have uh, a number of uh, very interesting uh, uh, subsidiary units that we own. Mm -hmm. uh, companies such as East African Cables, mm -hmm. uh, such as the Tanare Car of Tanzania, mm -hmm. such as the uh, AEA, and so forth. So I would, I would say Transcentury is an investment company, mm -hmm. and uh, we make uh, investments uh, in this region. Great. So there you have it. So at least a number of them uh, that people may identify with. And let me start by asking you, recently you announced the approval of a rights issue. Could you give us an overview of this particular transaction? Okay. The rights issue is actually uh, a funding transaction mm -hmm. that is going to allow the shareholders of Transcentury mm -hmm. to recapitalize their business mm -hmm. uh, by, uh, by going to the market and uh, uh, purchasing additional shares mm -hmm. at a prescribed price. Yeah. Uh, through that process, we are hoping to be able to raise about 2 billion shillings. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, if I may ask for the sake of the viewers as well, when we talk about rights issues, I don't want them to say we spoke some jargon. Mm -hmm. What is it in basic language? Uh, in basic language, I guess you're saying uh, it's uh, an opportunity yeah. for a shareholder, Absolutely. or even somebody who's not a shareholder right now, but can actually be able to purchase uh, shares yeah. uh, in the market mm -hmm. to actually be able to buy additional shares. Yeah. And then the money that will be raised, because when you're buying additional shares, that means you're providing uh, capital to uh, the, the business. Mm -hmm. uh, that money that now will be raised is the $2 billion, uh, excuse me, $2 billion shillings mm -hmm. that we're hoping to raise during this process. Okay, yes. excellent. And thank you, you'll be demystifying to us what you seek to do with that. But now you talked about that this rights issue will be used to support the last phase of your company's turnaround. Yes. And uh, briefly shed some more light on what this process will entail uh, right here. Okay, let me just take uh, a brief uh, history, or okay. I guess a little bit of a journey, uh, right. step back if I may. Uh, so Transcentury uh, is a very, uh, is a, I would call it a very good platform and has very good businesses in that platform. Mm -hmm. uh, over the years, so for example, we have East African Cables, as I mentioned earlier, we have uh, AEA, for example, we have Tanarek and so forth. Mm -hmm. And over the years, mm -hmm. uh, we've been involved, the group has been involved in some of the most iconic uh, infrastructure projects mm -hmm. uh, in this uh, in this market. Uh, for example, we are involved in the uh, Electrocana power project. For example, okay. mm -hmm. we are involved in the geothermal uh, plants in the Naivasha. Mm -hmm. We are involved in the base titanium uh, mining yeah. in the quarry and so forth. So over the years, as this growth has taken place, uh, it also required now funding mm -hmm. uh, in order for the business to acquire additional businesses to position itself, and also to increase the capacity at some of our, uh, some of our manufacturing uh, facilities. So as we did that, as a, as a company did that, mm -hmm. it also resulted in a higher debt profile of the company, okay. which subsequently now resulted in uh, constrained access to working capital. Mm -hmm. So over the last five years now, that's the, 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 the challenge that we've been trying to resolve okay. over the last five years. So we came up with a, a four-step process to turn around the business. Okay. Uh, so we started off, uh, number one, uh, introducing, uh, making sure that we have good governance, global best practices when it comes to governance mm -hmm. across not only at the group level mm -hmm. but also at the subsidiary level okay. uh, with all our businesses. Mm -hmm. So that was number one. Mm -hmm. And then number two, uh, it was to ensure that we restructure the debt for at the group level and also at the subsidiary level. Mm -hmm. uh, today, 50% of that debt has actually been restructured. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's been a, a, another positive. Mm -hmm. And then number three was to ensure that we have our order book mm -hmm. that's executable. As we stand here today, uh, we have an order book of about 50 million, just about 50 million dollars. So that also has been uh, uh, successful. And then finally, the fourth step was actually to do fundraising to uh, uh, unlock the working capital mm -hmm. for the subsidiary businesses. So that's the reason, for example, we're having this conversation mm -hmm. because we are now in the process of rights issue okay. that hopefully should be able to uh, uh, 
uh, solve that uh, rust uh, phase of the turnaround process. Okay. Yes. All right. Thanks for that turnaround strategy, and we certainly believe that it will come through. Yes. Um, so it would be important as well to understand from your strategy some of the notable achievements that you have uh, achieved so far, both in your group level and at your subsidiaries. If you care, please. Okay. Uh, very good question. Mm -hmm. So, if uh, you know, from a governance standpoint, for example, mm -hmm. I'm very pleased that. Uh, you know, we've implemented governance at the group level mm -hmm. uh, across the subsidiaries, so that has been very successful. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, very, very strong boards, you know, at the group level okay. and also at the, the subsidiaries. And, uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, you know, when you're turning around a business, uh, which I've done uh, many times over my career, uh, you require, there are a couple of things that you require in order for that turnaround to be successful. Number one, you have to make sure you have, uh, when I talk about governance, I'm also talking about the board. You know the board that's uh, willing to provide the oversight and the strategy overview uh, for the for the uh, for the business, which which we have across the group, and then number two, you need to have a management team that's willing to actually go through that journey with you, because it's not a it's not a walk in the park. You know, unfortunately, we have management teams across the group that have actually done a fantastic job under the supervision of the of the of the board of the board of directors uh, and travel that journey to turn around these businesses so that has been uh, very very helpful and let me allow me to give uh, specific examples yeah so let's take uh, Tanarek for example mm -hmm. Tanarek is the largest manufacturer of transformers in East Africa mm -hmm. you know through Tanarek Tanarek actually we we distribute uh, we sell our transformers all the way from to Mozambique we sell them in Ethiopia mm -hmm. and obviously in East Africa as well Mm -hmm. you know so it's been uh, a very successful uh, business uh, however though when I talk about turnaround mm -hmm. we are, the, the, the four steps that I talked about yeah. we are not only doing it for the group we are also doing it we had to do it for each of the units as well so each of the businesses so take Tanarek for example mm -hmm. so when you're talking about uh, turning it turning around the business mm -hmm. we are talking about number one making sure ensuring that the governance was in place mm -hmm. and then number two ensuring that we were able to restructure the debt you know, uh, which we're able to do that. And then number three, ensuring that there is an order book that can be executed on. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately, ensuring that uh, we were able to unlock the working capital. Unfortunately, through the restructure of the debt, we were also able to unlock working capital. Mm -hmm. So, Tanarek as a company, uh, over the last three years, has been profitable. Yeah. Uh, Tanarek in 2017 had top line revenue of about, what, 650 million shillings. As of the last financial reporting year, Tanarek was over 2 billion shillings in revenue. So you can see it's a company that has actually has gone through that process of the turnaround and has been successfully turned around. Let me give another example mm -hmm. of a different company, East African Cables. Yeah. Uh, one of the most, be, uh, one of the best known brands, yeah. especially when it comes to cables in this market. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows about it. Yeah. You know, uh, it uh, went through the same process again, mm -hmm. governance restructured the debt we moved it from one uh, financial institution to another and then obviously got a haircut on that and then uh, number th number three uh, order book it has a solid order book and then uh, ultimately now we are working on it um, as far as uh, uh, getting access or unlocking uh, working getting access to working capital okay uh, so a business like that that currently has constraints on working capital and yet continues to perform well, yet continues to grow. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the first half of 2022, East African Cable's top line revenue grew by 55%. Mm -hmm. Now, you can imagine a business like East African Cable's that uh, uh, does not, uh, still uh, is operating under constrained working capital conditions. Mm -hmm. Once it has working capital, mm -hmm. you can imagine how that business will perform. Okay. And then on top of that, mm -hmm. given that it's well positioned in the market as far as what the new administration is uh, uh, implementing going forward, mm -hmm. be it uh, from an infrastructure standpoint in such sectors as uh, transportation, uh, water, agriculture and so forth, which are some of the areas that we are, we are diversified in, into. So it will do very well. And then finally, let me use uh, one final example, yeah. AEA. Mm -hmm. Well known in this market, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to wave bridges you know, in our bypasses and so forth, uh, express with, uh, I guess, the by, uh, bypasses. Just for our viewers, what does AEA stand for? AEA mm -hmm. stands for Every East Africa. Okay. Although it just goes by AEA. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, uh, very, very uh, solid business, mm -hmm. uh, continues to do well, 
as a matter of fact, about a month or so ago, it was in the news because he got awarded uh, a contract to construct, what, 5,000 5, housing units mm. in DRC Congo. Mm. So it's not just a Kenyan uh, player, it's now a regional player. Okay. And as we diversify into some of these markets, we are just not going into them. We are, we are looking uh, as far as where are we going to be able to add most value and where, where are some of the best markets going forward. Mm -hmm. You know, if I may wear my uh, investor hat as uh, Kuramo, mm -hmm. you know, in DLC Congo, we actually own the largest palm oil production company in that country. As a matter of fact, we are the second largest employer in DLC after the government. You wow. know? So we are also looking at how, what are the, some of the synergies mm -hmm. that we can be able to capitalize on. Mm -hmm. So AEA will be very well positioned in some of these markets as we move forward. So those are just a couple of the examples. Yeah. So to your question, yeah. has the turnaround been successful? Yeah. The answer is yes. Are we, especially now that we are towards the tail end of that turnaround process. Yeah. So it has been very successful, so obviously in some of our businesses. Uh, the others that uh, hopefully with the rights issue, mm -hmm. it unlocks uh, the fundraising aspect of it. So yes, in my view, it has been successful. Okay. There you have it. How do you participate on this particular rights issue? We'll be right back after this break.